everyone, this is Andy Tech, and this is absolutely my favorite time of year. I can't wait for this to get started. This is going to be the 2021 March Madness Bracket, and I'm here to tell you all about my picks. So I'm going to minimize myself to avoid some of that lag on the webcam and show you guys the bracket because that is the most important part of this. There is going to be madness this year. So let's go ahead and get started with my bracket picks. So first we're going to see Gonzaga. I don't care who the 16 seed team is. They're not going to lose this one. They're undefeated all year. They know what they're doing. Mark Few has a lot of experience. When it comes to Oklahoma and Mizzou, Mizzou's won some pretty close games. Oklahoma's also done pretty well, but I'm going to give the nod to Oklahoma because they're in a better conference. Creighton's made some deep runs, so there's going to be no 12-5 upset in this region. Virginia, the top of the ACC, I'm not picking against them over Ohio. When it comes to USC and Drake, this is going to be interesting because Drake just scraped this out, but they've had a shaky end of their season, so I'm going to give the nod to USC here. I'm not betting against Kansas. Bill Self's made deep, deep runs in the tournament. When it comes to VCU and Oregon, I'm going to have to pull this one up to see their records. Oh, let's see. Oregon's had a much better schedule, and they've had a better record in the Pac-12 versus the Atlantic 10. So I'm sorry. I'm going to have to say Oregon here. No upsets yet. And we've got Iowa versus Grand Canyon. Iowa could have been the number one seed in the Big Ten at one point. So we're going to have Iowa advance. So no major upsets that I see in the West Conference. Now we're going to move down to the East. Michigan versus Texas Southern. Even without Isaiah Livers, Michigan's going to win this one. Texas Southern just scraped by with that win. Let's see, LSU versus St. Bonaventure. Yeah, St. Bonaventure. They make some deep runs. LSU, they went to the SEC Championship. So I'm going to say SEC Championship because it is a better conference. I'm sorry, St. Bonaventure. You're not going to get an upset here. Georgetown versus Colorado. Georgetown's coming off a winning streak. Colorado's had a pretty, pretty good season here in the Pac-12. I'm going to actually predict an upset here. 12 versus 5. Georgetown gets the upset. Florida State and UNCG. Over here, I'm going to have to go Florida State. I haven't seen UNCG play, but I don't think too many people are going to pick them. Let's see, 94 to 6%. BYU versus Michigan State and UCLA. Michigan State and UCLA, they're not used to being the 11 seed here. So it doesn't matter who comes out of here. This is going to be a tough one because they're playing just to get into the bracket. And BYU and the WCC, they're coming off a 10-3 record. They've lost to Gonzaga, the same record, same conference as Gonzaga. I'm going to go ahead and say that Michigan State gets in, but BYU will end their streak. I'm sorry, they're not going to get that far. Neither of these schools are going to get that far this year. Texas over Abilene Christian, that's an easy pick for me. UConn and Maryland. Maryland's in the Big Ten. That's a very tough conference, and UConn is 11-6 and six in the Big East. I'm going to say Maryland actually squeezes through. Call it an upset if you will. I don't think that's an upset. You're looking at a 7-10 seed. Iona, Rick Pitino, he's done it again. He's got another school into the tournament. I think Alabama is going to crush their dreams right there. So they made it in. That's pretty good for his first year in. But Alabama is going to end that. Now we're going to go to the Southern Conference. Baylor and Hartford. No-brainer for me. Baylor's going to win this one. Wisconsin's going to take North Carolina. They've had a tough year. Winthrop and Villanova. Are we smelling another upset? Possibly. Winthrop's only got one loss this entire year. But I'm going to say Nova squeezes by. So sorry, guys. No upset there. Purdue and North Texas. Purdue is in a much tougher conference. Purdue's going to win that one. Texas Tech's going to beat Utah State. Colgate and Arkansas. Okay, another one-loss team here versus Arkansas. I almost think that this this is going to be a close one, but I don't see an upset here either. Virginia Tech versus Florida. I'm going to pull this one up, and I'm going to say Virginia Tech gets the win. Florida has had more losses in the SEC in their conference. Ohio State, another potential one seed, so they're going to advance there. So the lowest seed you see coming through here is a 10 seed in this conference. Now let's go to the last one, the Midwest region. Illinois is going to beat Drexel, no doubt about that. They're a one seed, potentially 
should have been the Big Ten champions, right? Besides the tournament regular season, they've had more wins than anyone. Loyola's way underrated. They're going to make it easy and beat Georgia Tech. Tennessee is going to beat Oregon State without any difficulty. Now we've got Liberty and, and Oklahoma State. Let's take a look at Liberty. Five losses, two in the Atlantic Sun, but the Big 12, they are a tough, tough conference, so Oklahoma State gets the nod here. I'm not going to bet against Jim Beheim, so I'm, see, I see an upset. I see 11-6 upset right here. Usually when Jim Beheim's team is uh, lower seeded, they're going to make a deeper run. West Virginia is going to beat Moorhead State. Let's see, Rutgers and Clemson. I'm going to pull them up. 16-7 over 10-6. I'm going to say Rutgers actually will get the win. I know Clemson has the potential. If they win this one, they're going to make a deep run, but I think Rutgers is going to get through Houston. They've had a very impressive year in the AAC. They've only had three losses all in conference, so I'm going to say Houston advances here. Now, let's go to the round of 32. Gonzaga will beat Oklahoma easily. Virginia is going to get the win there over Creighton. Now you've got Kansas and USC. We're going to pull them up, and we've got to take a look at what's happening here. 12-6 in the Big Ten, 15-5 in the Pac-12. I see an upset. I don't know how healthy Kansas is going to be. So there you go. USC advances, and Iowa's going to beat Oregon. Go to the East region. Michigan and LSU. Michigan is going to win this one. It's not going to be that tough for them. Now you've got Georgetown and Florida State. Pull them up. I think Florida State has the major advantage here, so I'm going to say that the four seed goes through. BYU and Texas. Okay, this is going to be a tough one for Texas. Even though most people are picking them, I'm picking BYU to advance here, and I've got Alabama beating Maryland. Now let's go to the South region. Baylor will take down Wisconsin. Purdue is going to take Villanova. They've got a major injury. Now you've got Arkansas and Texas Tech. Texas Tech is known for making some deep runs, but 13-4 in the SEC, that's hard to beat. Ohio State's going to beat Virginia Tech without any real effort. So there you go. 1-2-3-4. Nothing really exciting happening in the South region. You've got Illinois and Loyola. Illinois may look past Loyola, so this is going to come down to maybe just probably six to seven points, but I think Illinois is going to get the win over here. Now you've got Oklahoma State and Tennessee. More people would probably give Oklahoma State the nod, but I'm going to say Tennessee actually squeezes through, so that's not much of an upset there. Now you've got West Virginia and Syracuse. West Virginia has given Baylor a run for their money. This is where Jim Beheim's team ends their season, and then you've got Rutgers versus Houston. So I think in this situation, Rutgers has a chance. I feel like if Clemson wins it, Clemson would actually beat Houston, but in this situation, Houston's going to go through. So nothing as exciting in this region as well. Let's go to the Sweet 16. Now you've got Gonzaga and Virginia. This will be a very interesting matchup, but Gonzaga is going to win this one. And now you've got USC and Iowa. Iowa's going to take this one, a 1-2 seed. Nothing too exciting in the final, or the Elite Eight there. Michigan and Florida State, who's going to punch their ticket in? I have a feeling Florida State is going to upset Michigan State here. And then you've got Alabama. They're going to play BYU. I'm going to have to look at this one, 10-3, 16-3. Two. This is going to be a tough one, but I think that Alabama is going to squeeze through. So you've got a 2-4. A little bit of chaos. Not too chaotic yet. Let's see what happens in the South region. Baylor and Purdue. Purdue will give Baylor a run for their money, but Baylor has too much experience here. They've a, they're a powerhouse this year. And now you've got Arkansas and Ohio State. Ohio State, they made a deep run into the Big Ten tournament, so I'm not going to have any doubt in my mind that, that uh, Ohio State's going to get through here. Now you've got a 1-5 matchup with Illinois and Tennessee. Illinois might be a little bit confident, but rightfully so. Tennessee is not going to be able to handle Kofi Coburn, so Illinois takes down Tennessee. And now you've got West Virginia versus Houston. I think Houston gets the nod, but I'm going to actually think about this one for a second because West Virginia 
in the Big 12, they've given Baylor a hard time. So I actually feel like it's going to be a 1-3 matchup here with Illinois and West Virginia. Now we're going to go to our Elite 8, Gonzaga versus Iowa. What's going to happen here? Iowa finished a little bit flat in the Big Ten. Gonzaga's coming off a high. This is exactly what they wanted. You know, they've got a 16 seed, then an 8 seed, then a 4 seed. Gonzaga punches their ticket to the Final Four. Now you've got Florida State versus Alabama. Florida State's won this. They've made deep runs before. Alabama is also pretty good. They're top of the SEC. I have a feeling Alabama is going to go through and take this one. So you've got a 1-2 in the first Final Four. Now we've got Baylor versus Ohio State. Baylor is a powerhouse. You cannot deny them. They've only lost, what, two games this year? Let's pull it up to verify. Yep, two games this year, one in conference. Baylor's going to take the cake. And then you've got Illinois and West Virginia. No doubt in my mind, Illinois is going to come out of top. This is still going to be a close game, but Illinois will find a way to win it. So you've got three ones and a two seed. Not exactly what people wanted for the Final Four, but let's see who's going to make it into the final. You've got Gonzaga versus Alabama. No doubt in my mind Gonzaga takes this one. And then you've got Illinois versus Baylor. It's going to be obvious that most people would choose Baylor on this one. They manhandled Illinois, but that was early on in the season. Now Illinois has experience. They've got power. They finish as the second team. I think they're going to have a rematch and get revenge over Baylor. And now you've got Illinois versus Gonzaga for the final. What's the common denominator? They go, both got beaten by North Carolina when they were here before, so they are out for blood. Gonzaga is still seeking their, their championship, and Illinois is still seeking it from 2005. So what's going to happen when Illinois plays Gonzaga? Will Gonzaga stay perfect, or will Illinois get an upset over Gonzaga? Because this is an upset if I choose Illinois. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose the upset for this one. Illinois wins it, guys. That is exciting. I am wearing the shirt of the winner, University of Illinois, Fighting Illini. They're going to come through. They're going to get the win. This is going to be an exciting matchup. Stay tuned. I hope this becomes a chaotic, yet fun March Madness. And we're going to see Kofi Coburn and Ayo Desunu rock the nation this year. Thanks for watching.